ora whanau. Welcome to episode fitu. Kia ora. This episode we're going to be talking about cosmology, the stars. Uh, we have a section uh, with Māori astrophysicist Dr Pauline Harris and we're doing a bit of an introduction to Matariki to lead us into our last episode eight. Last week we visited with the um, awesome Wahine Materia today and her exhibition Tūrua Pō, Astronesian 3000. And this exhibition primarily asked the question, what if Māori occupied space? Hope you guys enjoy. Kia kite. made out of um, just some second-hand fabric and um, and vintage kimono fabric. So it's just a mixture of all of those things, but I think it works. It's good. Yeah, I mean, it's Pan Pacific. I'll go this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so the... the that whole... massive conversation that we, we're really um, having acknowledged and absorbed by mainstream Pākehā media is understanding that um, there aren't individual factions of different peoples are given different weird yeah, names. Pacific. Know yeah. Yeah. I love the Austronesian yeah. Aotearoa. Yeah. As soon as I walked up here I was like, wait, what's that yeah. all about? <laughs> Tell us about that. What is that yeah. all about? So can like, I join your gang? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in um, but, but that's a that called it all about uh, you know, we all belong to Moana Nuiakiwa, like we all whanau. Um, um is exactly what this is t- is part of, um, because the, the the primary concept here is the Austronesian, you know, Polynesians in space, the use of space and technology, and the retelling of all of our stories, um, in this really futuristic sci-fi way through the lens of the Pacific, right. and you know, I'm Maori, Kahanunu and Adiho, so I'm going to end up looking at it through a primarily Maori. Mm. You know perspective, but the but the point is that, you know, Polynesians navigated, um, Wananuiaki were using the stars. We're experts at that for, mm. you know, generations and generations. And so why would we not then also navigate the stars? Yeah, that's um, amazing. You know, from, that. yeah, with that same with that same knowledge base. And so the the concept of us being Austronesians. Polynesians in space, that we occupy space, um, that we are sovereign and um, dominant in space, is just as valid a, you know, a futuristic vision as any other. Um, and so that's what this is, the first, my first attempt to try to tell that story in some way, um, by melding old history stories around Mahuika and Kurangai Tuku and then transporting those stories through time and space and technology three thousand years into the future. Um, we awesome. <laughs> with the Ashton Asian. <laughs> so I'm trying not to make too much. Was there oh, God, a specific <laughs> moment that triggered this idea or did it evolve um, over time or uh, how did it work? I was I started looking at um, I started my art school year looking at what if we'd never been colonised? What if we'd never signed the treaty? Nice. What if we'd... Yeah, <laughs> always been... <laughs> and was an excellent starting place. Yeah. So what if we had always been sovereign? Um, and because I'm really keen on textiles, I was, oh, and it was art, not politics, I was looking at it from the point of view, well, how would our textiles have developed? How would our garments have developed? What mm. would our design? How would we have expressed our national identity as... Um, iwi and hapu Māori in a mm. sovereign environment in the early 20th century. Um, that's how I ended up getting it's involved amazing. with kimono, yeah, because I was looking at how Japan had developed their garments and their designs over time as a sovereign nation through that same period. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, from cool. 1840 through to about 1925, 1930. Because um, T.W. Ratana went to Japan in 1925, I think. I didn't know that. Yeah, and um, we're starting to develop a kind of independent nation sort of hood relationship with Japan. It got into big trouble because, of course, Japan was on the other side. Oh, right. Right? <laughs> so, you know, so it, was, it, didn't, it didn't 
continue like it could have, but it just showed that there was this there were opportunities for sovereign action mm. by by Hapu Māori. Um, and so if we had been able to continue that, what things of how might that have looked? And then I ended up um, so I was going down that path. It was real fun, but then I ended up finding. Um, Afrofuturism, oh. which was, <laughs> which is, yeah, yeah. So the Afrofuturism, which is looking at um, space and technology and um, sci-fi through the lens of the Black Diaspora. So, hmm. you know, those those who survived the Middle Passage, you know, the transportation from one world to another, who survived alien invasion of their of their homelands. Um, alien abduction, mm. you know, you know that they would be um, better skilled than than practically anyone to navigate that in the future in space. So, you know, the Black Diaspora is having this amazing creative conversation about what the future for um, Black people is. Yeah. If you to look at it from a yeah. um, space in the future from from their point of view, and then it was like, well, what? Why don't we do that here? Yeah, <laughs> we should yeah, be doing yeah. that here too. Looking at it's a reinvention. Yeah, and, yeah. So but also with a, the way I view it, and uh, for, yeah. you know, as soon as I first I came up here a couple of weeks ago and had a look, um, it reminded me of our stories in that we hold the past, but it's in today. Yes. But it's also looking at the future, and that's yes. what I loved about all three. Or that, that continuation of time yes. and space was a part of your work. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, cause that, yeah that's exactly right. That there's, um, uh, time, is a, time is not just linear. It's actually all the stories we tell each other through time change and move as we change and move. And so we can keep retelling our stories to, to understand ourselves better now and in the future. And so we just need to keep on recreating those stories mm. for ourselves, which is where Kurangai Tuku and Mahuika come, come into it. Kurangai Tuku in particular, because I remember reading Nahuia Te Awe Kotuku's book, Kuruahini, years and years ago, like I was probably a t- teenager or close to it, um, where she was rewriting some of those old myths from a real feminist perspective. And in the Kurangai Tuku story, she, she elevates, she centres Kurangai Tuku in the Hachupatu that story, as opposed to him, and she uh, allows for Kuranga Tuku to survive and to take revenge. Um, and oh, I really love that story so much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because you know he did terrible things, and then even in the Mahui and Maui story, you know Maui was terrible and committed a, you know acts of violence and theft against um, his nanny. So. You know, those mm. are stories, those are parts it's of the, the whole stories. story, right? Yeah. As opposed to just part of which, yeah. the, the hero story rather right. than the... That's exactly right. Yeah. There's no, yeah, the, re- no yeah, yeah, yeah. reason to think that those stories haven't been edited for the, the post-colonial yeah, war. Well, Absolutely. Well, that, and that's right. So oh, we can't, That's what I feel about it, mm. for sure. No, well, that, yeah, no, that's exactly right. It's, it's hard to unpick the um, colonial lens from some of these things. I, I mean, this I find it fascinating because for our culture, so where I'm mm. from um, is Solomon Islands, but we've had much less... We've had colonisation in terms of government and politics goes, but in terms of our tribes and yeah. our con- contact with people, there's been far less. Yeah. So I'm seeing in our stories that there is much more of the... You hear all the negative and all the... And, and that's, that's something that... As soon as you said that, I was mm. like, yes, it is, it's definitely, we tailor our stories yeah. in New Zealand to try and, um, it, it, it's for another audience. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of a pacification. It's yeah, like it, that's it, right. So, um, yeah, so the stories are whitewashed to, uh, on the basis of gender, um, you know, so the, so... Hajipatu and Maui become the heroes of the story and their ability to trick and um, commit acts of violence against these women is considered to be both normal and heroic. Mm. Um, so, awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know that isn't necessarily the stories as they were told. We, you know, yeah. and we don't have access to that, so we we kind of have an ability now to retell as we choose, and, and we should. Yeah, and I also, you know, for us, I don't know um, how you feel about this, but for us, our stories are often told to tell lessons, and yes. when the women tell them. 
the stories are to teach the young ones how to not be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. again, I wonder about how we're telling the stories yeah. from that perspective as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, yeah. I really like. Um, I love sci-fi. Yeah, me too. Yeah. We all love sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I really like how um, it's not um, so dystopian. You know, not yes. so dark and. You know. Well, I want to uh, raise the question about do we um, fix the planet that we're on before we go and seek another one? <laughs> maybe or, this is the same thing. Maybe. 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 Oh. Look <laughs> <Have> on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes is the answer. Of course, there is no planet B. But, the, but, but if we're going to start, we have to start telling ourselves stories of us as sovereign. Yes. Us as dominant. Us as holding absolute agency in the present and the future. And so, and how, I mean, I'm using this kind of sci-fi kind of backwards and forwards in time approach with this work, but um, there'll be lots of different, there's lots of different people doing lots of different versions of that. Mm. And how how those stories of um, agency are told is going to, you know, um, is going to differ. It's really changed my perspective on the acronym NASA. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that that I I I know I've known it all my life because I was born in in the space race, you know, yep. early seventies, yep. yep. like the rest of us. Yeah. And it's never, I've never been able to articulate a nagging thing about how come we don't see minorities on those ships. Oh, in sci-fi, you know, it's always the black guy gets killed first by the aliens. Oh, I mean, you know, yeah, like it's just you sure. know, it's, it's um, changing in the last in the last little while, but. For a long time, yeah, black, yeah I mean, black people black did Panther not is... exist in space, and therefore we didn't exist in the future. Mm, that, that's, don't that, exist that, in yeah. the present. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right. yeah that, that's what the Afrofuturism <laughs> creative critique is all about, like putting black people in the future. So mm. looking, so taking, and Black Panther was the kind of yeah, that's mainstream right. version yeah, of yeah. that of recent times, but... Yeah. You know, people like and, and probably just put it out to a wider audience, which yes. is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good start. So I want to know what, what mummy. Yeah. Oh, is. there's just these are just these are just feathers for trade me. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah. Cool, so, man. Um, we love yeah. technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's, right, that's right. So she's just yeah. And your skull. Yes. Yeah, so the oh, process. Do you, little, want, do you want? Do you want? That's a. Um, I think that's a rabbit. Um, you know, so <laughs> would you like to tell us about how you put it together? Oh, uh, sure. So, um, so uh, my ho- well, the Ashtonesian was first, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, and I was Which is, this is that this one. is her here. Um, Beautiful. So I don't have a, I don't have a helmet here, but um, the Ashtonesian was the first of the characters, uh, well before the story was developed, and I was looking at. Um, that kind of you know the the process of Japanese textiles and stuff and 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 at gang patches because for all of the politics and the the view around them if you look at them as a textile they are quite amazing yeah. textiles um, and at the same time in Japan there, there's a kind of kimono I can't remember what it's called now that has small white um, little small white patches on it that signify whānau identity. Yeah. yeah, and they're, but they're quite little and on wow. black, white on black, and so it was like, well, there's this, here are these two versions of the same textile aesthetic, which is this black space with this um, textile that identifies our identity. In Japan, it's a statement of kind of um, agency and whānau authority. Here, it's the opposite. It's a statement of anti-authority. Yes. It's, an, it's an anti-state. It's, a, it's still a statement of belonging, but in contrast to the mainstream. So, and is that was that one possible example of what happens when you have a, um, a colonised people trying to assert identity versus a people who have never been colonised able mm. to assert their identity in any way they choose, mm. but they still end up using the same form. Mm, it's a telling a similar story, isn't it? Yeah. We, we put on a uniform to show which tribe we belong to. Yes, that's right. And it's very tribal in Japan. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. And, in, and in Aotearoa, it becomes a, but it becomes a real statement of, of anti-mainstream mm. and opposition. So I really wanted to make a leather kōrawai. <laughs> it like, that's very cool. That's like I what to do <laughs> with a patch and, and to try to identify it so by this point I was thinking about space and I've always wondered if we didn't wear skins 
in the back, back in the day, especially down did. down as far south as Murihiku, where there's plenty of um, seals, plenty of seals. Seal skin is amazing. Know, hundreds of thousands of seals before Pākehā came. Seal skin, I've seen clothing made of seal yeah. skin. Well, that's incredible. The Southern Museum stuff. in Art Gallery has some lovely pieces in yeah. their collection, but they were made by um, the aliens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, but they were made because they were cold. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. There yeah, was yeah, this yeah, resource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. And I know I've asked a rally from down south if we did, and his response was too smelly. But I think that, you know, there's ways of dealing with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah, totally. So one of the aunties here has, has had a similar conversation with me about, I'm pretty sure we wore sealskin trousers. It's jolly cold here. In yeah, winter. yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so this is a kind of a, the 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 kurawai is a you know it's a bit of a reflection of you know the leather jacket and the patch, it's but awesome. it is but it's yeah. just <laughs> transported both in time and context from being about um, anti mainstream um, anti colonialism to to just self determination and agency where colonization just doesn't exist as a frame. Like, hmm. This is the point. Like, how do you? This is a piece of work I'm trying to think through at the moment. Is how do you just not put the coliniser at the centre of your thinking. You, you know, Especially when it's them. been programmed that yes. way for so yes, long. It's like, right. how do you undo the programming? Yeah, absolutely. It is. Yeah. Well, you just, I, I mean, this is kind of like what we were talking about with Suzanne, with the decolonise your mind, yes. right? Mm. So... It's hard. It's, it, there's there's, it's, there's um, lots of writing about it, and it seems that it's probably extremely difficult, if not impossible, unless you want to revert, unless, unless it becomes a recolonisation of a different yeah, idea. Re- re- mm. yeah, yeah. So then the question then becomes, well, how do we create um, a vision for ourselves mm. that uses the best of what we have now? Yeah. You know, that is, that is real agency in the act that we take. Um, Reclaiming but, identity yeah. and... and that's what yes. I see in yeah. your like. Yeah. Okay, this is this is me. This is us. Yeah, this, this, and it's nothing wrong with picking and choosing things we've been shown from outside either. No, yeah. that's that's what yeah, that's what learning is, and that's what progress is. I mean, it just happens. It mm. happens by just right. interacting. And if we dress like Emma Peel in the process, <laughs> all the better for us. <laughs> just that, that, there are so <laughs> many issues. Okay, yeah, I'll to Mana, you can dress like Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Not these days. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that all of those different languages that you know pop up with the different materials you've chosen, mm. that you know digital printing and yeah. um, the, even the silver yes. mukawa, that's yes. genius. Oh, it's that. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My know, brother-in-law said it's just a real collaboration too, though I should say. Yes. Yeah, so like, there's a lot of people who've been involved. In see, this. that's tribal too. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like yeah, I know. I was. It was really hard to think of not doing it yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Why would you? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, um, so I took some of these photos. I think Chris Hansen took some of the other ones. Um, you know, those ones over there. Um, and uh, my brother-in-law um, designed the um, uh, Manaya in here. Which is oh, that's a, beautiful. Which, you, which is quite hard to see because of the... Um, but the, you can see it's got a sail as well. This is kind of like... Um, Kind of metallic kind of um, kind of framing here with its thigh and its wings, and then um, he also did his cover, Alex Whitaker. He did he did the Mokokowa. We collaborated on the design, but he's I can't draw. So is it a mannequin or is it a? Oh, the person. <laughs> no, so oh. they're all people. Yeah, yeah, no, no, fair enough. So this uh, is um, different Kathy people. Schroeder. Yep. So this is Catherine Schroeder. She's a dancer from here. Cool. Um, and yeah. So my sister helped me design this. This is three D printed, the helmet. Oh, cool! Yeah. So in, um, so she did the the computery stuff because I don't know how to do it. I know technology. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So the three yeah it's three D printed helmet. It's, not it's fantastic. We're living in the Jetsons I would never there. have guessed that that was three D printed. Yeah. No. It's neat, hey? Yeah. It's in like it's two different parts or twenty four different parts too. So I had to all be printed and then stuck together and yeah it's and then the collar fun. what's that oh the collar that's me the collar that's me is um uh it's this kind of silver vinyl in a in a textile form that's a bit that speaks to tanyakul like tanyakul is my favorite it's, it's, i love it to bits but um so it just speaks to kind of another yeah yeah form yeah of on there. Uh, it's almost um it reminds me of uh 
like trees too, actually. Like, yes, like, yeah, like the, uh, yeah, the Nikau, bark, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, have you ever talked about feathers? Yep, she's yeah. doing the kōrawai. Awesome. Yeah. I makes me think of backwards. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Well, that one, he was that one character hot. hawk was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, the minority. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so this is um, Jessica Latin. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. From here, another dancer. Yeah. Another nice. Dancer. Yeah. And then in the film, um, um, Moana Wesley was um, Kuranga Taku, and Jessica was Mahuika for the film. And you can see Jessica. That's, so that's tell us about the film. Mm. So the film, which isn't here because it's quite noisy, um, is a dance of the story um, where the Austronesian crash lands on... So the story is Mahuika and Kurangaituku suffer these violence at the hands of these um, men. And so and they aliens come here along with Papa Tuanuku and all the others to create... Um, the solar system um, and to build the earth and to um, and to create um, Māori and to support Māori to live good in the world um, and so they've stayed long after the mothership has left um, but then they suffer real violence at the hands of these of their early so they leave and they go back to their home world which is which um, circles um, 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 Otutahi and which is cannabis cannabis and then they are there, they're happy, they're like resolving, you know, they're kind of working through and they're happy and safe. And then the Astronesian crash lands on the planet. Um, and they, the film is off the crash landing, like once, once the Astronesians landed and the confrontation between Kuranga Tuku, Mahuika and the Astronesian, where the, the goddesses, the Atua, are like, we remember the smell of this creature, we, we recognise the danger from this um, Māori human, and so they attack it, um, and they attempt to kill it, and in the process, just before they kill it, um, they take off its helmet, and they see this mana wahine, with all of her hair flowing, and they realise, of course, that the first Astronesian is not another Māori man come to cause them harm, it's a mana wahine, who's oh. come to be part and discover her own atua, um, and then they discover that you know retribution can be found in forgiveness too, and so they become kind of connected as Udi, um, and that's awesome. what the film is of. <laughs> wow, this yeah. is such a massive task. So, uh, yeah, how <laughs> long? Profound. It's so huge, <laughs> eh? Like, I had no idea there was a film as well. So, how long have you been working on, on all this? of this? Um, oh, this is last year's project. Well, yeah. I love art school. I know, me too. <laughs> I'd go back in a flash. <laughs> Do it all again. <laughs> yeah. That's the best. Yeah. So, yeah, so the final exhibition was um, the costumes, the photographs, and the film. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, t I uh, was very pleased to have Tikitani's um, Tangaro. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, cool. Used that, which was oh, great. amazing. It was actually, it was beautiful. It was a really beautiful soundtrack for it. So, so what's the future for the future? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the, for the yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I. Um, or for your vision of where it goes to next? Well, in my own practice at the moment, I'm a bit obsessed with the moon. You know, I, you know, because I was. Fair enough. Je Jessica, last year, <laughs> last year, Jessica did this. I was part of a project with Jessica Latin on um, called Ha Ha Karanga, which was a big dance performance. Thank God at, for that. that yeah, was awesome. it, it was, was amazing. Highlight. Yeah, so it was a big dance performance in, um, at Tuitu for the International Science Festival, and that was based on Rani Matamua's book yep. around yeah, on Matariki. And so I went to see his lecture. I've got his book again, and you know they've like they've got pictures of the dark side of the moon. They've been sprouting seeds on the on the moon. It's like the moon has a a different kind of occupies a different concept in uh, Maitauranga Māori. Mm. And so, yeah, so there's something oh, about awesome. that. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. at the moment I'm kind of like just trying to Let pick us know through ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back to talk what to do about that, yeah. <laughs> the, the whole time we've been talking, the, there's been, um, for me, a feeling of um, antagonism towards the space race, even though 
my favourite film is a sci-fi film, <laughs> and I've grown up in that era of, you know, the ultimate job was to be um, an astronaut. Yes. Or yeah, if you, want to if be you lived on the other side of the Iron Curtain, <laughs> the ultimate job was to be a cosmonaut. Mm-hmm. But there was binary with those two white nations mm. of um, east versus west in a very northern um, place, so that perspective of looking out from where they were that didn't include everybody else around them, mm. and racing for sovereignty of everything out there. So uh, um, I watched yeah. a, another yeah, um, 60s it? spy film last night, just you know, just mm. for laughs, and that was under the undercurrent the whole time was who's going to take over the world, who has control, mm. and therefore who has control of what lies beyond. Yep. It's pointless, because we can't do it if we don't all do it together. Um, if we do it on our own back, if we do it with our own hearts rather than as a servant to somebody else's greed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Greed, greed is the mm. is the most destructive. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you call it, whether you call it a value, but it is it is um, the cause all, of all the problems. They want greed is, they yeah. want resources. Mm. They want to yeah. grow stuff yeah. on the moon. Yeah. So there's yes, yeah, you know, there's, it's, that's right. But there's also, but also it is part of the human endeavour. To explore and to and to learn new things and to go to new places. It's just it's part it's of nature. Yeah, it's just it's, it's our kind nature. of interesting that, that um, exploration and colonialism are so intertwined. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it just reminds me of the, what's happening in the Arctic at the moment. Mm. You know, divvying it up or trying, you know, mm. trying to seek. Oh, yeah. the Antarctic yes. is a classic yeah. example. Yeah, of and and going back to how, what and what motivated us to explore our massive ocean, some theories mm. are that it wasn't curiosity; it was to grow more food. Yeah, I and mean, I don't necessarily buy that. I think no, we're naturally either. curious. Yeah, me too. I think so. I love too. to travel, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think Exploration is definitely part of That's right. The yeah, water yeah, highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, people want to go. Yeah, yeah. see yeah. new things, do new things, do new things. I mean, it's a it's a complete human obsession, and I don't know. I don't think. I think like how we do it mm. and the principles we use and the process of doing it and you know how how we support people and are uh, good to people in the process and good to the planet in the process is a is a different question from the yeah, fact yeah, that yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. niche. Yeah. But, but that's how we want to we want it's to like keep it. exploring. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. right. That's yeah. right. So it's, I mean, our, the ethics we go yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Are, uh, Whole another. Yeah. Thank you so that? much. Yeah. No worries. Is there anything else that you want to add um, that no, we I, haven't? Uh, like, I need. I mean, I need that. I'm incredibly yeah. grateful for this collaboration because there's no That's way we've done it alone. Um, Are we, we going to see it out of the out of the space? Um, I hope about so. taking it around the country. <laughs> 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 I mean, I can see this at Te Papa, or... <laughs> I, I just, was that a bit scary? It's, it's scary, but I, but I do think... Um, Not a lot of our people are going to come up these stairs. No, and and um, I think the work, and I think the people involved in the work, uh, deserve for it to go um, further to other places around the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Imagine that all those Comic- Comic-Con kids would be like, who's that? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,